And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisor Channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. It's about 12 o'clock. Sorry, it's one o'clock. <clears throat> we just had a four hour closure on Bitcoin and looks like a bit of an indecision candle alongside a bit of a, call it a hammer, encouraging some downside bias as long as we were below this wick here at uh, 26,249. But I think the main level to watch out for on Bitcoin is going to be 26,845, specifically on Binance. 26,845. Wow, nice little leg down there on the 15 minute bearish divergence that we called out this morning in our live trading group. Pretty cool. Check out our Discord if you want to join us there. Link is in the description below. By the way, if you do enjoy the updates, we're going to talk about not only Bitcoin price action, where it could be heading next, but well, what did the Fed say last week? 2% remains our target and uh, <clears throat> we're going to do whatever it takes to get there. He said something like we are flying under the stars without, we're navigating with the stars under the clouds. Basically, he means we got no clue what we're doing. So let's take a look at the CME rate hike tool calculator. Are they going to give back some of those gains? Uh, in respect. Da, 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 da. Let's see what the Fed rate tool says. And the next Fed meeting. Do you guys think they're going to raise rates again? I, I think there's a good chance. And there's a 78, 21% chance they're going to go another 25 basis points at the next meeting, September 20th. September 20th, we got another month left to depend on the economic data. Short-term retracement looks like uh, wants to test that breakdown level at least uh, here. Coming into the dead gap area. So let's take a look at the liquidation levels. We're going to talk about the, pep the Pepe rug pull. We're going to talk about Evergrande really getting smashed on the chin here. Apparently, they halted the trading of Evergrande Group for 17 months. When they opened it up this morning, it was down 78%. Again, Evergrande or Evergrande is the big developer out of China that's going bankrupt right now. And as you can see, their stock price gapped down pretty nicely. Um, so ripple on effect from China to the United States. One thing I can tell you, though, is the Chinese are pumping some liquidity in the market. We said we're going to keep an eye on this as well. Why is that? Well, when the Chinese start pumping liquidity in the market, let's take a look on the daily time frame. What happened last time? And it all started with the same pump of liquidity, similar pump. And here is this is the Chinese PBOC liquidity injections. You can see the last time we did some injections at this level was right before the major rally over here, right before the major rally over here and here as well. So we want the Chinese to keep pumping liquidity into the market. Uh, USD stable coin supplies are coming down. We want to see those go. Yeah, keep coming down, not go up. Stable coin supply go up it means people are dumping their stables and buying more altcoins. Um, Anyways, uh, back on to the heat maps, liquidation levels on Ethereum. I'll give that one first because I got the chart up here, but um, pretty much uh, call it 1600 to the downside, 1700 to the upside, and going to get the next big move for Ethereum. 16 and 1700. Those are the numbers to keep a keen eye on. Personally, I think we're coming about 1610 on the shorter term time frames. Right now, 1610, 1620, probably going to have a nice little retracement back down there. And actually, I'm going to show you this perfect retest of the green 55 right now. Um, this is something we would do in our live trading group um, is Ethereum on the 15 minute time frame just had a little breakdown and a retrace. And what you can see on the five minute, a lot of times when you get these breakdown retraces, well, it's just another move before the next leg down. Uh, as long as we don't close back anywhere above the range high here at uh, 1555 pressures onto the downside on the 15 minute. And I would expect we go and grab that liquidity down here at about 
Well, first level down, 1615. And that's why I said uh, I think that's probably where, where we are headed. But I wouldn't lay it out of the cards for the market makers to throw it up to about 1675 and then throw it down after the dead gap bounce. But um, that's just me. That's just me. I think, um, yeah, so what I was going to show you on the 15 minute time frame is this silver cross to the downside with the green 55. Typically, um, you know, going to be an area of rejection right here. And um, yeah, as long as we're closing back below, you know, 1654 on the shorter term time frames, and it's probably going to tag down one more time. We already had a big wake down today. So I don't know if there's going to be another wick in the cards here, but that is not the health, uh, the sign of health and fitness for Mr. Ethereum. Ethereum's going to do whatever Bitcoin does, but more. It has been a bit weaker than Bitcoin as Bitcoin dominance has been relatively strong. And we'll check in on that really quick here. So Bitcoin dominance still uh, taking a leg down, and that's okay as long as we don't break back below the pivot here. I think this is, well, maybe that was the pivot on the weekly time frame. Come on, Internet, don't fail me now. So we're still above the critical level, I'd say, on the uh, weekly time frame, which is this guy right here. Yeah, 47.14, as long as we're above there. Uh, treads the road of happy destiny to the upside for Bitcoin dominance. Gold, how's my golds doing? Gold uh, attempting to bounce here off the green 55. Pressure's on to the downside. I think um, as long as the Dixie is holding up strong, which uh, to be fair has been pretty strong, but pulling back in the shorter term time frames and did close a weekly healthily above the area, hit our resistance. And, you know, if we just, pull back here and put in a higher low, that would be good for a rally up there. As the dollar does pull back, you would expect stocks to rally. NASDAQ did come down and tap the box of peace and prosperity and death and despair, but did not get a, well, did get a relief bounce. I think it wants to come back and test one more time. It filled the gap officially. As long as we don't close below there, uh, bullish for bullish for NASDAQ. And you can see a bit of a W forming right there. And yeah, any kind of a closure back above here, I'm going to look for uh, reapproaching the highs at a minimum on NASDAQ. So four hour back, back above that level at 15,345. And we revisit the highs. If you're more conservative, wait for a 12 hour or a daily. Cardano, how's my Cardano's getting a bit of a bounce in the light of the rest of the market? Getting apps. Somebody's alarm's going off. Anyways, I think uh, the other news I wanted to bring up was the Pepe rug pull. So apparently the founders just sold all their tokens. And that's what happens. And if you've been following our channel after that parabolic blow off top, what did I say? Probably going to do a 100% retrace uh, back to the lows. And um, well... I'm going to pull up the chart here if I can find it. Mr. Pepe, the green frog that just smiles. And, you know, to be fair, right now, probably, you know, if a spot buying opportunity. No, I'm not even going to say that. Don't don't put your two cents in here. Probably going to come down more, to be fair, and fill out that wick one more time. Um, but the full retrace, yeah, sends it all the way down. That would be the full retrace. I'm looking for a test of that wick one more time. If we lose that wick, then it's going to be game over for Pepe for some time, if not already. Uh, but to, to consider this, this should technically be your support level. Bitcoin shows any weakness. This thing's going to show more weakness. Um, let's see. What else do we want to bring up today? Do we have any other good uh, news? No. Pepe, China, Evergrande. Shares plunge as much as 87%. There is a new bill in Congress. They're trying to wreck crypto and take control with their CBDCs. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but uh, they're yeah not, not being very friendly to the United States here. And then mortgage rate demand drops to a 20-year low as higher interest rates are and inflation crush the home buyer. So we talked about Ethereum liquidation levels. Let me give it to you on a Bitcoin right now as 
Bitcoin is the rule of the market. Whatever Bitcoin does, Bitcoin, uh, <laughs> the rest of the altcoins do more typically. But the upside or the top side of the range, 26,450. The bottom side of the range, 25,700. You get a, you know, a four hour closure uh, below there. And I do believe 25,1 is going to get tagged. Something else to note. Uh, let's see where we're at in the broader picture of volatility expansion on our higher term time frames. As we do want to denote the expansion of volatility on the daily time frame typically gets you that 20% move. Uh, in either direction. So volatility is now declining mean reversion bounce time. So where do the bounce targets come? I do think we are, even if we swipe the lows one more time, going to get a bounce somewhere up to at least 27 to 28,000, somewhere in that range. And then we play the game of lower high or not. Um, so that being said, that being said, I'm going to leave it to you guys. I hope you have a blessed and highly favored rest of your day. Enjoy it. Um, and I will be back tomorrow with some more updates. Take care and have a blessed one.